I had my last drink over 365 days ago. That milestone of one year was a few days ago now, and it was a pretty big thing for me. You see, I was an alcoholic. And over the years, I knew I needed to do something about my drinking. But it was always, I'll quit tomorrow. And tomorrow never came. So in this video, I wanted to talk about how I became an alcoholic and how I eventually stopped drinking. And to make clear, this video is not to shame anyone about drinking. I just thought it might act as a good resource if you're someone who's struggling with drink and you want to give up but you just don't know where to start. Please do me a favor, smash the like button and also give that subscribe button some love as well. Let's get into it. So this all started when I was pretty young. And it all started because of my personality. I'm a really shy person. At events or parties, I would always be the wallflower. I remember my first drink when I was just 15. At that time, I had a part-time job at McDonald's on the weekend. And one of the other crew members there was having a house party on a Saturday night. I don't know how I ended up going to the party. I think I might have been invited as I was clocking off work on the Saturday evening and I was too shy to say no, so I just got dragged along. And when I was there, I found myself sitting on my own, not sure how to interact with anyone. But eventually someone noticed me sitting there and gave me a drink. And it changed everything. I drank two cans that night. I remember that clearly because it earned me the nickname Two Can Sam. And while I was drinking those two cans, I noticed a complete shift in my personality. I was suddenly able to talk freely with people, to socialize and to enjoy myself. And so this night would set the stage for the next 30 plus years. I didn't start binge drinking immediately but I'd exposed a part of myself that would crop up from time to time over the next five years. And it would become impossible to control once I reached the age of 20. By the time I was 20, I was working full time and I was living on my own. And that's where the drinking kicked into overdrive. The first six months I was living on my own, I kept to myself. I was living in a new and unfamiliar part of Australia, I had a new full-time IT job, and I had to travel everywhere by car. But after about six months, everything changed. I was asked to go to London to help set up a new office for the firm I was working for. As a 20-year-old, I couldn't give up this all-expenses-paid trip to London, so of course I said yes. And that's where the trouble started. Now that I was living in London with no need to drive and living with work colleagues from all over the world, the drinking began in earnest. Every night after work, we were at the pub, which was conveniently located on the ground floor of the office building we were in. Every night involved stumbling onto the tube, the subway, before midnight or getting a cab. And every morning involved hangovers. But I was in a new place, not knowing how long I'd be there. And at 20 years old, you bounce back from hangovers pretty quickly. And the alcohol was making me social, and it was improving my life. After a lifetime of being too shy to speak to anyone, I was finally loosening up. And it felt great. So much so that if I couldn't coax any of my colleagues into going for a drink after work on any particular day... I would feel awful. I had this horrible sinking feeling in my stomach like I was missing out. And each day at work would be spent thinking about how I could go out for a drink with my colleagues after work. And while I'm not sure that I was actually addicted to alcohol at this point, I was addicted to all the feelings that went along with it. And I was in London for almost a year. And then over the coming years, I continued to travel overseas with the firm which also meant continuing to live with other colleagues that were traveling too, and continue to drink in order to overcome my shyness. From London, I went to Hong Kong, to South Africa, to America, and to New Zealand. And for the whole time that I was living abroad, I could rely on that one thing, alcohol. It provided the ultimate comfort in unfamiliar situations. 
and it made me talkative and social. And even though the traveling eventually stopped, the drinking never did. Fast forward a couple of decades and the drink had become less of a socialization tool and more of a comfort tool. If I was stressed about something or having a bad day at work, I could always relax by thinking of those upcoming beers or glasses of wine. Just over a year ago, I'd be teaching a class late at night and all I could focus on was that upcoming beer on the train on the way home. And in the back of my mind, I knew this was getting out of control. But the beer was comfort and there was always tomorrow for giving up. And so I kept putting it off and never really thinking about it seriously until it all came to a head in June 2022. I saw my doctor and he broke the news. I needed to stop drinking and I needed to do it now. He wanted to put me on a medication called Antabuse. And so you take this medication and it doesn't do anything unless you drink alcohol. And then it makes you violently ill. Kind of like getting an electric shock every time you do something you're not meant to. And I didn't want to be on this medication. But I did understand the seriousness of the doctor now telling me I needed to stop drinking. And it's the message I needed to hear. Because I haven't had another drink and it's been more than 365 days since that meeting. Here's how I stopped drinking and why I'll never drink again. So I didn't want to take this medication, and so I asked the doctor if I could have a couple of weeks to try and fix this on my own. I thought about the situation, and it really boiled down to two issues. One, I had developed some really bad habits and routines, like drinking on the train on the way home, which inevitably led to more drinking. And two, I needed to improve my self-control. And self-control was a tough one for me because I've always been a kind of if I want it, I'm going to go and get it type of person when it comes to food and drink. To address this, I decided to jump onto a keto diet. I've done these types of diets before. And one of the things that always gets better whenever I'm eating on one of these diets is the self-control in every facet of my life. So I went keto. And the other thing I needed to do was to address the bad habits and the routines. So I knew that if I walked past the convenience store on the way home, that I was very likely to go in there and buy a beer. I knew that if I walked past those inviting restaurants on the way to or from work, those same restaurants where I had enjoyed many a drink, I would almost certainly end up in there with a pint glass in my hand. And so I started to change all of my routines. And it was a simple case of taking the long way around. No more walking past the restaurants or the convenience stores. Even on the way home, I'd risk missing the train to take the long route home to avoid the temptation. Funny thing is, I ended up enjoying these longer walks. And the fact I was 100% sober meant these longer walks came with enhanced thinking time. And this thinking time built on the enhanced self-control from doing the diet. And it wasn't long before the keto diet that I was on morphed into a carnivore diet. And that's what took things to a whole other level of self-control. If you've never heard of the carnivore diet, it's a 100% animal-based diet. Fruits, vegetables, the whole lot are excluded. No carbohydrate at all. And let me tell you, getting those carbohydrates out of your diet is magic for your self-control. A week or so after getting onto the carnivore diet, I had no temptation for anything. And so the combination of the carnivore diet and changing my routines is what enabled me to give up the booze. And importantly, I now have the self-control to know that I'm never going back. So what's improved? A combination of the carnivore diet and no longer drinking alcohol means that I no longer have gum disease or arthritis. But the biggest impact of no longer drinking alcohol is what it means mentally. I'm in a much calmer place now. I can finish everything I start 
I'm not randomly cancelling things because I'm too tired to do it or because I missed an alarm or because I'm hungover. And I'm much more focused and productive because I'm not wasting time romanticizing what that beer or glass of wine is going to taste like when I knock off work. Typically, I think we tend to have a belief that alcoholism is just a problem with our ability to say no. But it's much more complicated than that. The alcohol is addictive. And the crappy diet you're eating that goes hand in hand with the overconsumption of alcohol that you have does so much damage to your self-control. And so if you're at the point where you know that you really need to give up alcohol, try doing it by changing your diet at the same time. Not because you need more challenges, but because you need as much self-control as you can get. And consuming plants, cereals, donuts and fried foods is not helping you. Guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.